I'm Adama Kauman. Welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> TikTok must favorite. That's good. <laughs> Okay, Nana. the wrist is not shaking. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Nana. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So, the moment that we've all been waiting for. Let's get into talking about Ghana. It was just so interesting because when you go to Ghana, you have to pay $150 to take a COVID test to make sure that you're negative. So they're not playing any games. And that is a big price in order to step into a country over testing. And so like, God forbid if something happened to you, like they don't play any games. Like you're not bringing COVID into their country. Like there's a lot going on. You're not bringing your disease there. <laughs> and when you leave, you pay $50. They will try to scam you and pay, try to get you paid more and bring you to other places that require you to pay more. But I was like, no. Like When I went to Ghana, it was such a culture shock, for sure. I could not believe that I made it there. It was so different and so hot. <laughs> it was so hot being in Ghana. I was in Ghana February 2022, which was not that long ago. And that whole week we saw 90 degree weather. Um, it would fluctuate between like 91 to like 96. It was just crazy. I've never experienced heat like that in my life. I remember staying at like close to Laboni, which was not far from Oxford, which Oxford is like, known as like the party area but when i was there i just it was so interesting being in ghana like i couldn't believe i was there because i've been wanting to go to ghana all my life because my father lived in the bronx and then my mom lived in manhattan whenever i would hang out with my father growing up i would feel that i was in africa when i lived in the bronx I used to think that the Bronx was Africa because anytime I was with my father, all he was around was Ghanaian people. And I just remember whenever I would see like non-Ghanaian people around my father, I would just be so confused. And I never learned how to speak Tree, but I remember it, didn't, it took me a long time to speak a language period because my mom spoke American. My mom spoke English. And then my dad spoke Twi, so I would just speak a made-up language, which is not any different from today. I would just, I'm always doing my own thing. <laughs> I remember seeing the schoolgirls. Apparently when you're a schoolgirl, they make you shave your head off, which is wild. Like having long hair as a man, period, in Ghana is kind of like taboo. Because I remember speaking with my friend Echo and he told me how you're considered like a drug addict or a wild person when you have long hair and cops will stop you. And that's what happened when I was in Ghana. I got stopped by the police. I was going to pick up some clothes from a designer I was going to do a collaboration with. And I remember picking up these clothes. The cop looked at me and I looked at the cop as the Uber was driving me. And then the cop stopped the Uber car. And I was just kind of like, what is going on? He wanted to see what was in my bag and I was like, it's clothes. Like, it's clothes. And I'm like, I'm not from here. He like immediately cut me off. And he's like, I don't really care what you have to say. 
And I got really nervous for that second. I was like, oh my God, I'm in a different country. Like you need to play by the rules and relax. Like you need to not be dramatic. You need to not say anything because you don't know what could happen being in a different country where the cops are stopping you just because of your hair. They think that like I would have had a gun or whatever because of my hair. And I just had cornrows. No, I had a big afro. I had a big afro on and so that's what happened. Like one thing that I was really culture shocked by is like how like Asian people are making their way to Ghana. Like, and when I say Asian people, I'm talking about Indian people and I'm talking about Chinese people. And then there is like a lot of Indian and Ghanaian infused food, like that fusion that's happening. But like I went to this Indian and Ghanaian infused place and it was so good. I had jollo fries there. And I have this amazing lemonade that was really good. Like it was fun to like explore these different eateries. Every time I talk about Wache, like, it gets me hungry. And it's so interesting because I grew up eating Wache for dinner. And Wache is usually like a chicken, dark black rice, like egg, noodles, and it's like this big meal combination. I had Wache a whole lot of times when I was there. People eat Wache over there for breakfast, and I think that's so wild because it's a big meal. I remember when I first asked some friends, it was like, oh my God, I wanna get some Wache. And Wache is usually noted for being eaten to be eaten during breakfast because it gives you a lot of strength so you can work hard throughout the whole day. And so it's supposed to be like a heavy set meal. And let me tell you, when you eat wache, like you are set. Like it's so heavy. And then when it goes through your digestive system, it is like, it's so heavy and eating. And so if you ever have a chance to eat wache from Ghana, do it. But I had, I eat it here in the Bronx too. I got to hang out in Mokolo shopping area. And that was due to meeting my friend, one love, Kugula, who I love. Okay. He's like the central reason why I have the best time in Ghana. I got to be on set of Juan Love's Sister, Sister Debbie's music video and assist as like a photographer, which was super cool. It's like there's like this really deep harmony in their relationship as a brother and sister, which I love. I just am so in love with how him and his sister are so tender with one another and listen to one another and respect one another and like see each other's ideas and want to like run with those ideas together versus separately. Family means a lot to me and seeing that was amazing. And it was also really interested in being a part of someone who was that famous in Ghana. Um, because it was just very much like I got to be a part of his ride. People would constantly stop him and want to talk to him and have a relationship with him. Juan Love, he's just so for the people. He challenges like social norms and 
he's a very big advocate for a lot of different communities that he belongs to. And to be able to share space with him was just so amazing. He made me feel like one of the boys and I love that feeling. And he's very fluid in his lifestyle choices and so like, he knows what this is all about, and but at the same time though, it's like all his friends are very soft but machismo at the same time. And I loved that experience and being a part of it. You know, I remember he originally invited me to this private ceremony. The resistance of our continuous dedication to show love and fight for the right of respect and our human dignity. It's illegal to be gay in Ghana, and you know, Ghana is a very strongly practiced Christian country, to the point that like I remember just being in the car sometimes and people just listening to like preachers and like sermons on the radio. They tried to open up a gay center in Ghana, and it was unsuccessful because of the laws that were that were fighting against same gender loving people over there. Like I felt like my hands were tied because there was not much that I could do and I just wanted to support. And we like celebrated each other in our West African queerness over there. Not many people can say they, they have experienced that and like even thinking about it, it makes me feel emotional because it made me realize the privilege of being queer in America and specifically in New York City. I remember speaking to friends over there and they would tell me that they would talk to a person for a year before they even considered talking or to a person in person. Like there's a lot of catfish over there in the grinder and like it was just, it was a lot and I just felt like, damn, I wish there was something more we could do in terms of the queer community in Ghana. I feel that we there should be something that's done. Our brothers and sisters over there are struggling with their sexuality and they should be able to feel unchained in who they are. I was at KFC and this girl is looking at me and she's giving butch vibes, butch energy. She's taking my order from KFC because there's literally probably only 10 KFCs in the entire country of Ghana. Ghana doesn't really celebrate like fast food, you know, franchises like that. Like there's not even a McDonald's in Ghana. And this girl, she's just like, she whispers to me because it's so taboo to be queer over there. She's like, are you one of the rainbow people? And once again, when you ask me that, I'm always just so uncomfortable because I feel like it's either you know or you don't know. And just get with the vibe, get to know me. Don't get to know these labels that are placed on me. I don't take on titles. I just take on the title of being a Domico. We, we came across this guy who's a pimp out there. I had to see like, like, like sex workers out there, like walking the streets. I thought that was really cool. Live your life, sex worker. Do your thing, sex worker. Be in your sex working life. And I had a few women approach me and I'm just kind of like, I don't have anything for you. <laughs> I got to go to Teshi and I got to like see the beach. You know, Teshi just kind of gave me like belly vibes. But I look at Jamaicans as like my children. Like they're my children because they descend from my people. And there is actually a relationship between Ghana and Jamaica where we could have citizenship. Being in Teshi kind of made me realize even more like, okay, like this is the reason why Jamaicans are the way how they are in terms of their culture. It's like, they're our babies. Our babies are our, our babies. Gosh, I did two photo shoots when I was in Ghana and I got to work with these amazing photographers and to see their work and to see what they're about. Like, it was just incredibly amazing. I encourage people to like, when they travel, to like really find their community. Like if you're a dancer, find the dancing community. If you're a music artist, find the music community. And then I also got to go to Wakanda Beach they have a Wakanda beach in Ghana, so that just lets you know where Wakanda is from. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever stop having a fascination 
with life and wanting to experience a lot more of it. I would have never imagined to have the experiences that I had while in Africa. I was opened to new friendships and new beginnings on my return back to the U.S. But little did I know that I would be returning back to Africa months later.